Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and in this video I want to do one of my kind of GTN market series regarding some of the really nice and yet very affordable armor sets, weapons, other customizations you can get for your Jedi Knight specifically. So this is going to be a very Jedi themed episode focusing on some of the stuff that I've really enjoyed using on my Jedi Knight. And all of the stuff that I show you in this video will be under 1 million credits. So once again, very affordable. Some of you guys might be thinking 1 million credits is a lot, but it's not with, with you know, with a heroics giving you 1 million credits just for doing a planetary set of heroics. It's not too bad. You can easily get any of the items I show you guys in this video. I will not be obviously talking about the really awesome but expensive stuff like the revered master's armor set or the exiled master's armor set or some of that kind of stuff. We'll be focusing more on the stuff that probably all of you guys watching this video should be able to obtain. I should note that I'm using the prices on the Satil Sean server, so it obviously will vary between servers. And also, right after I put up this video, you'll probably see a spike in these prices because people watch this video, go and buy that stuff up, and so it's no longer available. But give it a few weeks, it'll probably go back down to its normal prices. That's usually what happens when I do one of these types of videos. Anyways, enough of the introduction, let's get into the items themselves, and I do want to start with armor sets, and the one thing I want to note, this is kind of a really good secret in the game that's really awesome for new players, especially players who don't have a lot of credits. Check out this vendor here. Now, there is an Imperial side vendor as well that gives you a lot of Imperial themed items, but if you go to the Republic one, you'll find a huge plethora of really awesome Jedi themed armor sets that you can get. A lot of these are actually legacy armor sets as well, and a legacy armor set just means you can transfer the armor to another one of your alts even if you put mods in it and stuff so it doesn't automatically bind to you and all of these kind of armor designs here are really cool once again Keep in mind these are affordable, like if you can look here, the price range is from 600 to 2500 credits, so extremely cheap. And so it's not going to hold a torch to some of the really nice stuff on the cartel market. But once again, if you're just a new player, if you're a preferred player or a free to play player, you just don't have a lot of credits, this is the place to go. A lot of these armor sets and chest plates you see here have actually been reskinned into cartel market items. So rather than getting the fancy cartel market stuff, you can just go here and get basically the exact same looking version for a much cheaper price. Uh, but specifically, there are some changes. Like for example, one of my favorites here is this robe. Now this robe has actually been reskinned into the classic conservator, uh, the conservator and the realm next. Like it's not a complete reskin, but it's very uh, similar and based off of this design. The only difference would be if you don't like the hood, you basically have to buy the cartel market version. So there are some small nuances to pay attention to, but I'd say if you're on a budget, you just kind of want a cool Jedi Knight looking thing, this is the place to go. Even if it has a hood, it's still an awesome robe. I really like the whole wrinkles near the chest. I think it has some really nice detail there. So I guess the bottom line is check out this vendor, you might find something you'd like and you basically have to pay no credits to get it. The other thing are the classic conservator and the conservator armor sets. These are also pretty cheap on the cartel market. They offer you a very nice looking robe. Uh, one of them will obviously not have a hood, so that's very beneficial for people who don't like the hood and want to design without that. The Preceptor is also another armor set that caught my eye as a really cheap armor set that actually looks quite nice. The other one here is the Exiled Knights armor set. Now this one is actually one of my favorites. It's a silver rarity armor set that's pretty cheap and it just is a really good kind of design that's not traditional, not something you'd see in the prequels or anything, but definitely something that goes well with the whole Outlander theme. And in my opinion, it's an armor set that really befits a warrior. Uh, another one that's really good for someone who really wants to go off a warrior theme, like something you'd wear into battle, the Cunning Statesman armor set actually turns out to be really nice. Now disregard everything from this armor set aside from the upper body armor. I really enjoy the whole polished and pristine look. It actually looks like really good armor. And the irony of that is the Cunning Statesman is meant to be an armor set for a statesman. It's actually, I believe, based off of the Star Wars Rebels character, who was that kind of... um imperial dignitary on Lokath. So it was actually based off of her design. She's obviously not a warrior, but uh, it actually, I think, as an upper body armor looks great, especially if you dye it black or if you dye it some sort of dark color. I think it looks absolutely amazing. So that's definitely one I'd point out to you. It's a gold armor piece, but it's very, very cheap on the GTN, not expensive at all. The other one here I'd point out to you is an Intrepid Knight's armor set. Now this could work well on a male or a female character, but I think this one's very much geared towards female characters. It's once again a, just a very nicely designed armor set with a lot of detail. I think um, this one is actually one of the really nice silver armor sets that have been designed in the game. 
One thing I really enjoy is how one sleeve is down, the other sleeve is kind of cut. I don't know, I just think that makes for a really decent and cool look. I think all parts of the armor set look nice. There isn't much of a helmet associated with this one, but the boots are also cool, the gloves and the belt, everything kind of fits together really nicely. So as a silver armor set below 1 million credits, I'd say this one is a really nice pick for a Jedi Knight. I wanted to highlight also two other armor sets here that are very new and have just been released to the game. One of them is, is the cool and security armor set. And I mentioned this in the video where I highlighted, you know, the pack items that this comes out of. I really like the design of the upper body armor. I like the ornamentation. It looks very fancy and luxurious. And I don't know, I just once again feel like a female Jedi Knight would actually look really good in this upper body armor. So I enjoy that design. The second one is the Agile Sentinels armor set. Now this one I feel is based off of like if you were once again on a budget you wanted something that looks like the Sith Recluse armor set but you kind of geared more towards a Jedi but also kind of a knockoff version this is the one to go to. I think it looks awesome and the resemblance of the Sith Recluse armor set is definitely there I think. Um, so this is definitely one for a warrior. It's obviously Agile Sentinel. It's, it means it was meant for kind of Jedi characters but anyone can wear it. And I do think it's worth mentioning that once again, disregard the helmet on this one. The helmet is absolutely atrocious and ugly, but the upper body armor looks nice. And the other stuff like the boots, the, the pants, the, the gloves, they do also have their own kind of nice design to them. But I would probably use other things. Um, I'll, I'll mention those other things now, actually. I want to go off away from the armor sets and move into some of the other kind of supplementary stuff. So not just the chest plates or the helmets, but rather kind of uh, the some things that you could add to your character's design that really make them stick out. And one of my favorite things is the Dynamic Brawler's headpiece. Now, I've mentioned this in numerous videos and will continue to mention them in videos now beyond this one because I just want to raise awareness about this item piece as much as possible. I think it's just about one of the nicest things to ever be introduced into the game. Now, as you guys can see on the GTN here, this is 300,000 credits. It's uh, the only one there. So it's, it's a relatively rare armor piece, even though it's bronze um, rarity. Like, it's just such an old armor piece. It's not always available. But every time I've seen this on the GTN, it's always going for an affordable price. It's almost never expensive. If you're wondering what's so special about this, basically it's this little circlet that you put on your forehead, so it doesn't really show much. But when you activate your weapon, your eyes will actually glow bright white. And I think that's really cool, especially for Jedi. Like, you know, Jedi using the Force to see or using the Force to gain some sort of special power. There's a lot of role-playing opportunity for this. And the Dynamic Brawler's headpiece, I think, can be used in so many ways for so many effects. Uh, it looks pretty good under a hood as well, so I would definitely suggest getting this. If you see it for cheap on the GT and get it for your collection, I think it's definitely worth it. You can use it on any character, but on Jedi, I think it just works so well with them. Okay, moving on, one of the other things I want to highlight are cybernetic armor pieces. Now, in my opinion, you know, considering Anakin lost his hand, uh, Luke lost his hand, like, cybernetics has always been kind of a part of Jedi, I feel. At least, especially with the trilogy. And so, um, the original trilogy. And so, there are a lot of cybernetic pieces that actually look really good in game. As I was mentioning earlier, one of the things I do with my Jedi is I pretend he was damaged in battle. So, one of the things I love doing is putting cybernetic armor pieces on him that really show that, you know, he's, he's been through stuff. Uh, two of my favorite cybernetic armor pieces are the glove, which basically gives you a cybernetic hand, and then the leg, which gives you a whole cybernetic leg. And these are actually, once again, pretty cheap on the GTN. The gold version of these is only like 700k, but then the bronze version, like go on your collections tabs, just look at, just type in cybernetic and do the search, and you'll find all the cybernetic armor sets. All of the bronze ones are usually very, very cheap on the GTN. They do look pretty nice, but if you can snag yourself one of the nice gold ones, those definitely do look the nicest. But either way, these make awesome accessory items for any Jedi Knight. Now, I do want to finally finish off the armor thing with highlighting some of these other armor pieces that I think are less, are not very well known because they're not cartel market armor pieces. They're usually just green, blue, or purple armor pieces that are just kind of based off of generic designs. Oftentimes, you can find these for very cheap prices on the GTN. And keep in mind, you don't have to worry about the stats. You can just throw them in Outfit Designer, stamp them, and then, you know, remove them. You don't need to worry about stats. So some of these include just type in Jedi into GTN search. You'll get some really nice Jedi armor sets. Uh, Knight's Crusade is another good one. The Ruson Force. Uh, expert vestments. These are just some examples that I just uh, found by searching for about 10-15 minutes on the GTN. And who knows, one of these designs might speak to you. Always the cartel market stuff is not always the nicest. Sometimes just a generic design of the game turns out to be pretty awesome. 
Finally, we'll end this discussion with the boots. Now there are two boots I wanna highlight. One is that kind of goes really well with the whole robe look. The other one goes very well with the whole warrior look. So if you're looking for armor plating and stuff. So in regard to the robe look, the Karth Onasi boots are one of my favorite. Now considering we just got the revered master's armor set, which was meant to be the traditional uh, prequel Jedi robe style, what I found interesting was the boots didn't really work well. And I find that the Karth Onasi boots are one of the closest boots you'll ever get to like the original tr uh, prequel boots. Like, you know, the brown boots that are always very shiny and stuff. Karth Onasi's boots work so well for that style. I use them on every one of my Jedi. Just check out how they look here. They're always very shiny. I don't like that big plate thing that's on your knee. So I would definitely remove that if I could, but unfortunately that's just part of the design. And the other one is the Exar Coons boots. Now these are very nice for people who are going more for that warrior look. So if you were using the Cunning Statesman upper body armor, maybe you'd want to consider the Exar Coon boots because those have a very nice plating to them. They look really cool. And um, yeah, they're pretty cheap as well. And then finally, we'll go away from the armor sets and we'll move on into weapons and weapon modifications. And the two weapons I do want to, the two weapon series actually I want to highlight here are the unsealed and the exposed. So the unsealed weapon series, just type in unsealed lightsaber into the GTN. You'll get things like the Serenity unsealed and the Vengeance unsealed lightsaber. These are from the Explorer Pack shipment. And the Explorer Pack shipment had one of the nicest lightsaber designs ever introduced into the game. They have this really old kind of rustic feel to them. They're usually black colored and all of them usually have some sort of crystal uh, visual effect. So for example, the Vengeance Unsealed has a crystal um, circu circling in that little circle at the bottom. The Serenity Unsealed has a crystal circling all the way at the bottom of the hilt. And I just really enjoy these weapon designs, especially the Vengeance Unsealed and how curved it is. It's really awesome and cool. And these, once again, very cheap on the GTN. They always go for cheap. Um, the Exposed Weapon Series was also very nice. It's based off of very similar designs, but they have some pretty big differences that I think would make one more appealing than the other. My favorite personally to use is the Serenity Unsealed and the Vengeance Unsealed. The Serenity Unsealed is very similar to Obi-Wan Kenobi's design from the prequels. And the Vengeance Unsealed is just cool because it's curved, but the Reckoning Exposed is also a very nice one. Some of the other ones are really cool as well. Finally, we'll move on into crystals. Now, there are two crystals I want to highlight for Jedi. The farmhand blue crystal and the desert green crystal. Now, these are the traditional blue and green color crystals that you'll see in the trilogy. Um, for example, the green is similar to what you'll see on Qui-Gon's lightsaber, and the blue is actually not the like Anakin and Obi-Wan style blue. It's the Luke Skywalker from A New Hope style blue color. Uh, very specific, but it does look very cool. I would definitely suggest trying to get these on your Jedi. Hell, sometimes I even use them on my Sith. I just really love their color. I'll go very simple with color crystals. I know there's some really funky color crystals in game, and if you can't afford the really awesome blue, I mean, the really awesome white and white color crystal, the white and black color crystal, I'd say definitely go for the farmhand blue and the desert green. Uh, these are just awesome for Jedi. They are just a traditional colors. I personally love how they look, and they're also only like 100 to 200K on the GTN. So it's definitely worth it, in my opinion, to take a look at those. Anyways. That, guys, ends my list of what I think are some of the best and cheapest items to get for a Jedi Knight. Some of these, like the Dynamic Brawler's headgear and the crystals and the lightsabers are must-haves. I think the armor sets will appeal to certain people. I feel as though I've shown kind of a decent variety, but if you guys have anything to add to this list, I do implore that you put it in the comments section. So that way, anybody that's looking at this video and wants to dress up their Jedi Knight can just look in the comments section and get even more items to check out. And who knows, maybe they can come up with a really awesome combination. So please, if you have any additions you want to make and what would be on your list, just put it in the comment section. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys had a good time and I'll see you guys in the next one.